welcome back to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a Minecraft server in Minecraft 1.13 on a Mac. We've got this tutorial, but this tutorial is on a PC. It's a bit different on a Mac, so I'm going to be going through every single step of the process on a Mac. But first, I do want to remind you to go to the breakdown.xyz slash MC server if you want a 24-hour server. The server we're making here is only going to be up when your iMac or your Mac is running. It's only going to be on Online when that is the case and when you actually have the server on your computer using resources. Also, your computer might not be good enough to run a server and play Minecraft at the same time. And if that's the case, game servers at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash MC server will help you out so much. Also, you're not going to be able to give this IP address. The IP address of this server is your own IP. And if you give that out to everybody, it's to people you don't trust, they can take your internet offline, they can do things like that and, and you know, even figure out where you live. So, the thing is, I would not recommend doing this server if you want a 24-hour server or you don't want to use your own computer's resources. For that, I'd recommend going over to game servers and spending just $1 to get an awesome 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. Again, that's the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash MC server. Now, if you just want a server for you and your friends and you're confident your computer is good enough to handle it and all that stuff, then this is the tutorial for you. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. So the first thing we want to do is go to here, which is the second link down below. And I've just remembered that this is the wrong article. I need to change that. But nevertheless, if we scroll down here, you can see this is our how to download and install Minecraft on a PC article. We want to come down here and click this download button. It will take us off to here, where in the bottom, we want to click on this set up your own server server link. Once you click that, it will take you to here, where you want to click on download minecraft underscore dot one dot thirteen dot jar. Click on that, and it will download the Minecraft server there. Now, let's go ahead and minimize this, and just right on our desktop here, let's right click, create a new folder. I'm going to title this MC server one dot thirteen. And then I'm going to uh, take this file right here and drop it into it. But wait, we need to come back to our browser and keep this file. I promise it's safe, guys. It's from Minecraft.net, the official creators of Minecraft here. Nothing sketchy about this, so you're good there. But when we minimize our browser, we can go ahead and drag this jar file we downloaded over here into MC Server 1.13. Now, we need to download Java. So let's go ahead and open up Google Chrome here. You might already have Java installed, but it can't hurt to come here and update it. So if you go to the third link down below, it will take you to this page where you want to scroll down until you see Mac OS right here. I'm going to go ahead, click on that. You must agree to the licensing agreement. I, I agree to it. Sorry about that. Come down here, click on that, and it's going to download Java for us. Now this is actually the Java SDK, not to be confused with Java itself. You will need the Java SDK in order to uh, install a server, set up a server, all of that stuff. I'll wait until this is finished and then I'll see you guys. There we go. Java is now downloaded and we can come down here to our downloads folder and then just click on it to uh, install it basically like any other program. Right, It's going to open up here, double click on the icon to install and then just click continue and install all the way through this. Enter your administration password and then it will install Java or the Java SDK right here. So boom, there we go. Go ahead and click close there and I want to move that to trash because we don't need it. I'm also going to unmount the installation there and there we go. Awesome stuff. So with Java installed, we can now minimize this and go ahead and open up this MC server folder we created. Now we just want to double click on server.jar. It's going to be opening this up, right? Server cannot be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. Okay, that's fine. We can fix that. Come down here to system preferences, right? You could also hit command space and type in system preferences right there, right? Now up here you want to go to security and privacy, right? So right there it is, security and privacy. And then if you come down here you can see server.jar was blocked from opening. You want to open it? Yes, open anyway is what we want to click there. And then again you want to confirm open and then it will open the server.jar back here. Lo loading some stuff, doing some things. That's basically just downloading the things we need to get the server up and running, and then it's going to shut down and close out of everything because we need to agree to the EULA. To do that, right-click on it, go to Open With, Text Edit here. Then you want to take and copy this URL right here into your browser, read over the EULA, make sure your server is going to comply with it. If it is, come back here and change the EULA equals true to EULA equals, or sorry, EULA equals false right there to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like this 
this lowercase and everything, and then go ahead and click File, Save, and then we can close out of that, and now double click on server.jar yet again. Now it's gonna go through, run some more stuff, do some more things, and this time, it's actually going to open up our server management. Here, this is where we're gonna manage all the server and do everything. As you can see, we can see everything loading in, see it setting up everything, doing everything, preparing the spawn area, and then eventually, when everything is done and everything is set up, it will say, done. And there we go, done. Now down here, we can just type stop, S-T-O-P, enter, and it will now go ahead, stop the server. We now need to go ahead come back into system preferences over here, right? And then from here, we need to go into our network right there. From here, we then need to come down to our Wi-Fi or your whatever internet connection you're on, go into advanced, and then go over to TCP slash IP here, right? So I'm gonna do that again, just so you can, yeah, I don't know, but network, and then go to whatever your Wi-Fi network is, in my case, it's the great one here. Click Advanced, and then come over to TCP slash IP. It's that simple, guys. So many people overcomplicate this, it is super simple to do. Once you're here, you wanna take your IPv4 address, go ahead and copy that, and then come over here to the server.properties file. Right click on it, open with, and it's not gonna have anything there. Go ahead and click on other, and then you should be able to click on text edit right down here. See that? Click open, and now it's going to open server.properties as a text edit file. You then wanna find where it says server-ip right here, and paste your your IPv4 address there right like that. Again, we just got the IPv4 address from right over here. Go ahead and click File, Save on the server.properties file, close out of that, and now we can come back over to here. So this is basically done. At this point, you could run your server locally and connect to it by just typing in localhost into joining the Minecraft server. But I don't know about you, I want my friends to be able to play on the server, so let's make that happen. We need to port forward. So we're gonna go ahead and come back to our network here. And from this, we wanna copy our router, right? Now mine's 192.168.1.1, whatever your router number is here, just go ahead and copy it, and then come back over to your web browser, open up a new tab, right? And then right up here where you would normally tap in like www.youtube.com, something like that, go ahead and enter that router login or that router IP right here. So boom, and then it's gonna load for a second and then eventually it's going to pull up a login box. Now your login box is probably gonna be completely different from the login box it pulls up for me. That is because you probably have a different router than what I have. That is no big deal. I'm gonna try to give you all of the different names that I've all like ever seen the stuff in my router called here in order to make sure that that you um, know what you're doing and can find it on your router. This is taking a second to load, most likely because I'm on Wi-Fi, but when this does load, I will see you guys in a second. There we go, and now as you can see, I'm actually using a different router. If you've watched another one of my tutorials, I'm using a different router for this one, just to give you guys an example of what a Netgear router might look like. If you have a Linksys router, this process is the same on both PC and Mac, so go check it out on my PC tutorial, which is linked in the description. But nevertheless, here we go, let's go ahead and log in. Now, if you don't know your login information here, that is not a problem, right? Go to the, I think, third link down below and it will take you here, where we give you tons of different ways to find your router password. Five, actually, including of resetting your router and getting the default router password. So yeah, you've got tons of options here. Going down through this entire list should give you the uh, result you're wanting of being able to log into your router, right? Like this. Once we're in the router, we're looking for port forwarding. Now, on this router here, it might be under security. It might be under virtual servers, right? Virtual servers, I've seen that before. It might be under advanced. It might be under advanced advanced. It might be under security. There's tons of options. On this Netgear router, and your Netgear router may be different, but on this one, it's under advanced, and then it is under, again, advanced, right? Right down here. And then it's called port forwarding slash port triggering. So if we click on that, boom, here we are. Now, as you can see, I've done this before. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that just so you guys can get the experience. Yours is most likely gonna look something similar or completely different than this, but that's okay. So what we wanna do 
is port forward right up here at the top and then we want to add a custom service right that's what we're doing for this one yours may be completely different it, you might just have like a couple rows an internal port and an external port and an IP address that might be all you have but I have to add a custom service here so service name I'm just gonna name this Minecraft server for our service type or our protocol or our whatever I don't know what it's going to be called for you but it's going to be TCP slash UDP or for you it might be both it could also be all there's no standard here but when you click on the box you should have three options TCP UDP and then both of them together right as you can see right here I've got both of them together TCP slash UDP that's what we're going at with now for our external starting port and our external ending port guess what two five five six five every single port on here is going to be two five five six five it doesn't matter what the ports are called guys as long as you're in port forwarding put the ports as two five five six five and you'll be good to go now down here your internal IP address this is actually going to be your IPv4 address right now for me I can just come down here and select Nick's iMac which is the computer we're on boom there we go it's added but for you you're gonna be able to get your IPv4 address over here now if you notice my IPv4 address is actually different from earlier in the tutorial why is that well I switched networks earlier in the tutorial I was on this network right here, the great one, which is my primary Wi-Fi, but I decided, no, I want to do this on our secondary Wi-Fi network to show you guys a different router. So I switched and thus that changed my IPv4 address. And if you have an issue, say your server works for like a week and then it stops working, most likely your IPv4 address has changed. Just come back in your port forward here and change it back uh, to whatever it is now. So with that, we can go ahead and click apply. And just like that, the port will appear there, Minecraft server 25565 all the way across with our IPv4 address, which we can again confirm over here, is that right there. Awesome flipping stuff. The hard part, guys, is done. If you have any other issues with port forwarding, check out, I believe, the fourth link down below. It is our complete guide to port forwarding. We go over everything, how to do it. You don't need, this is for Windows, this, this first part, like how to find you know, your router on a Mac, you go here to find that, and it's your router right there. But everything else is cross-platform, and it will work perfectly fine. So uh, go check this article out, link down below if you have any issues with port forwarding. So, with that done, all we need to do is minimize our browser here, close out of our network thing, we're actually done with this now, and then go ahead and launch server.jar. We also need to go ahead and launch up into Minecraft, right? So I'm going to open up Minecraft 1.13 here. Our server is loading up. I'll move that over to the side so you guys can see it. Minecraft 1.13 is opening in the background, or the Minecraft launcher rather. Let's see, I don't think Java liked two things opening like that at once. Give me a second my white screen issue here. So I got the Minecraft launcher opened here, but if you uh, if you notice, I hit play, it says the game is already running. That's because this entire tutorial, I've had Minecraft open in the background. Minecraft 1.13 is open here. Kind of a fail, but nevertheless, we'll look past it. Launch into multiplayer here and go ahead and direct connect to your IPv4 address, which mine is not 25565, it's 192.168.1.10 right there. Join server, that will launch you on into your Minecraft server, and we'll be able to see pop up over here as players. At this point, go ahead and op yourself. Type OP, and then whatever your username is over here. In my case, that's Nick's Games. Enter, and then boom, we are now opt. That means we can change our game mode and things like that. Only mod people that um, you want to, how do I put this, have all of the power on your server, right? These are basically admins on your server if you mod them. As you can see, we are in 1.13 here. I don't think these are in any other Minecraft versions. But um, with that, that's how you can join your server. But if you have your friends join off of your IPv4 address, well, guys, it's not going to work out for you. Well, it's not going to work at all. So how do your friends join your server? Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave this server, disconnect, so you'll be able to see me log off over here. Not on the server anymore. And we want to come to Google. I'm going to go ahead and go to a website that is linked down below. It's what's 
myip.com. Right like that, it will take us here. And there is a, uh, a black box on your screen. You can only see the last two numbers of this. But this is your public IP. Why can you only see the last two numbers? Because guys, you don't want to give this out to everybody. I've actually blurred over here, blacked out my region as well. That's all of the information that they can get. somebody can get if they have your IP address. So you do not want to give this out to everybody and you want to be careful with it. That's why a server from game servers, first link down below, is so great if you want to have a public server. But nevertheless, give this to your friends and family that you want to join the server. And uh, they'll just drop it into Minecraft just like uh, any old any old server they've ever played on here. So go ahead, click direct connect, and then you wanna paste in your server address here. Click join server and it will load on up. Now you might be thinking, Nick, the audio just randomly changed. Yes, it did. Uh, for some reason, my audio cut out in this video. So I'm recording this as voiceover after the fact, but still the same there. It should go ahead and launch on into the server. And yeah, there you go. As you can see, I'm joined in here. Awesome stuff. Congratulations. You now have a uh, Minecraft server running on your Mac. Now, if you do have any issues with this server, please feel free to post them in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to help you out. Also, please consider checking out game servers. It's going to be a lot easier than running a server on your Mac is because you're going to be able to connect to it. It's not going to use your own local resources on your Mac. It's going to use offshore, or not offshore, but off-site, basically, meaning not in your own local network or in your house hardware to host the server so awesome stuff there you can check that out at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash mc server but look at this one dot one dot 13 is just so beautiful guys it's just so beautiful this is the most beautiful minecraft update i think they've ever done but nevertheless i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already my name is nick this has been the breakdown and i am out guys peace